Okay, I'm over here at tradingview.com. Uh, if you're using a different platform, that's perfectly fine. I just want to use this one because it's easy to use, uh, relatively easy to use, and it's got a free version too. Uh, if you go to the free version, uh, the, this homepage may look a little different, but there'll always be a spot where you can put in a ticker symbol right in the top here. So let's go look at some vaccine, um, COVID-19 vaccine companies, uh, Johnson Johnson, Pfizer, and Moderna, and see if there's some buying and some trading opportunities out there. And really the whole purpose is to demonstrate uh, the concepts. So that's the idea. We're going to demonstrate some of the concepts here. So you can just type in the in the full name, like Johnson Johnson, if you're not sure of the ticker symbol, and it'll start coming up with different things. Uh, but let's say I'm just, uh, if I know the ticker, I'll just go J&J. &J. Uh, we'll start with them. You can see also that J&J &J is listed in a lot of different stock exchanges. So that allows you people in these areas to trade right directly with it. Otherwise, there's things you can do with a broker as far as uh, your broker might support trading with it too. But we're going to use, you know, of course, USC here, uh, where I'm at, and uh, we'll see. All right, so here we are. We got Johnson Johnson. This is their current trading price. And really, when you want to get to, and there's always lots of information, by the way, on TradingView, but what you want to get to is on the full-featured chart. They might show you like a little mini chart here, uh, but you want to get to the full feature chart. If you're using the free version, you, you just look for something that's going to look like this little square here uh, if you're using, happen to be using TradingView. But the whole idea here is not to teach you TradingView this lesson, it's to demonstrate some of the things here that we're learning. So let's take a look at that. So it shows the long kind of history of it. Along the bottom, we've got E for earnings, D for dividends. This is a dividend paying stock, so it'll pay you income if you hold it for like more than a quarter. Uh, usually it pays out its uh, it, it pays out a dividend quarterly. So uh, there's some earnings and some quarters there. And you can kind of, you know, kind of scroll by and move it around or whatever. I just use the mouse to, to move it down. So let's take a look here. All right, so this was, uh, this the trading day is live, so we are open. Uh, you can see up at the top here what an open you know, high, low close was on a particular day. Uh, so it opened at 165. Uh, highs at 165.31. So it opened at a high, but it's now dropped uh, a little bit. It's, uh, you know, it's dropping down here now. So um, this is, uh, you can see why this is why this is red. But I was looking at this one. One interesting thing from a trading aspect is you can see they had a nice run up here. Uh, you could really look at it and say, oh, okay, it looks like they had a really nice kind of uptrend here too. Uh, I mean, you could go all the way back here as far as an uptrend and see, oh, okay, this is a really good uptrend here. Or even if we were to look at it more from, um, let's say, from a shorter type view, you can see there was a, whoops, you can see there was a nice uptrend, you know, kind of even coming from here. If we looked at that where there was a little bit of a pullback, and you can see that we've got an uptrend there. So with that, uh, they, they really dropped here on this particular day because they had an, an announcement, right? This is an event. We talk about events, and for them, their event was uh, they had an announcement that their, their shot for their vaccine is good, but it's only 66% effective, which in the history of vaccines, as my understanding, is actually really, really good. The problem is their competitors, like Pfizer and Moderna, which we'll look at in a moment, they're running about 95% effectiveness. So if you're going to take a vaccine, you want to take the more effective vaccine, right? Uh, so that's why they dropped. Also, they weren't as effective in trials that they're showing against a, a South African strain of COVID. So you can see that's why they had this drop here. And what made them very interesting, we had a gap down, right? So you see the gap down. So we're moving in terms of a gap down. And then the question is, are we starting a new trend? Are we going down or whatever? So you can see they really, you know, closed down. So this is the day the because the red candle had closed, it closed down. This is the current trading day. And right now we're lower than the close. So this is all happening. But this could, candle could change by the end of the day. So we will take a look at that in a moment too. Now, one thing with Johnson Johnson, let's say I'm a long view trader. So I want to, I'm not trading a short term pattern. This is, by the way, based on days. I could change up here to, you know, hours, minutes, whatever I want to do, weeks or whatever. We'll leave it at days here. And, um, but let's say I'm, I'm a long time believer in Johnson Johnson. Uh, uh, as a person, you want to trade on a long view. So maybe I'm starting my trend line way back here because I'm doing a long view. And I draw a trend line all the way out to here, right? Because we're going to extend it all the way. And we can see like from here, you can adjust these a little bit. You can see I have one touch, two touch, three touch, four, broke through, but still closed above uh, or right by there. So that's five, six touches. Uh, so a nice strong trend going. We had the event, it dropped to the trend line, actually went below the trend line as far as the wick uh, or in the closes or the current prices are getting real close to breaking through that. Uh, you can see also, you see how this, how this high volume spike here, that was trading on that bad news of the volume spike. But if I'm a long-term trader, I might say, you know what, that's okay. I'm going to buy on the pullback. And maybe that's something we'll do here is we'll, we're going to buy on the pullback. 
But let's look at some other information. Let's say that we want to look at uh, a moving average, right? Maybe we want to look at a moving average and see how that's going as far as something a little bit more, a uh, little bit more current on there. So this is our long-term trend line, but now we're going to put a moving average uh, over the the top of it. Is what we're going to do. So let's do that. So we're going here. We'll find. Let's put a let's put a just a regular old moving average, right? Let's uh, well actually let's put a weighted moving average on there. So we're going to go find moving average. You can type it in the search too. And let's see here, moving average, there's exponential and weighted. Let's just use a regular old moving average, nothing, nothing fancy here. And I'm gonna make that, uh, that color, you can change the style here to make it a little bit more so it distincts out. So let's say we're gonna, let's do orange and we're gonna make this a little bit you know, brighter or deeper so you can kind of see. So as we see here, this is our current trading day. We've, we've crossed below the moving average line for, and this is a nine day moving average, they default to that. Uh, you can change the defaults, but it was a default to that. So we've crossed that 90-day moving average. So that was a sell signal, right? So this is a sell signal that we're seeing here. Uh, but let's say, um, and again, we're not trying to make it fit, but I'm saying I'm going long on this, so maybe nine days is too short. Maybe I want to change that input to, from nine days, I want to change that to a 20-day moving average. What would what would that look like if we did a 20-day moving average? Well, it would show that we're, we've approached our long-term trend line. This is a long-term line again. And that we've uh, we broke through it here on the bottom wick, but we're still above it as far as a 20-day moving average. So, you know, that would be an indicator that maybe we're still above that we're maybe strong here on this. Uh, another thing we could do is let's say we did it instead of 20, we did 60, right? So let's see if we did 60 on that 60-day uh, moving average. You can see we're well above on a 60-day moving average. So the the takeaway from that in trend demonstrate is how if you change your moving averages, that's going to change you know, what you're, what you're seeing there. And again, you, hopefully you heard me talking through it as far as if this might be a play to buy a dividend paying stock. If you're going to hold it for more than a quarter, you might get a dividend. If you're going to hold it for a year or forever, you know, this might be a great time to buy on a nice little pullback on some bad news uh, if, regarding the vaccine. Remember Johnson Johnson, you know, they do a lot of other stuff in, in, in addition to vaccines. You know, they do band-aids is what they're famous for. And they do a lot of other surgical type of uh, support and equipment, and they do a lot of other uh, pharmaceutical drugs other than vaccines. The other thing too with Johnson Johnson, if we look at it from a long view, you could say, well, you know, they're a one-shot vaccine where Pfizer, Moderna are two-shot, and they don't need any special refrigeration or anything like that too. So at some point as vaccines roll out, let's say to uh, more developing countries that don't have that specialized equipment, you know, they might, and it's also less expensive, the vaccine for Johnson Johnson, in addition to being one shot, each dose is less expensive. You know, they might choose, okay, we're going to go with a 60%, 66% effectiveness because it's going to be so much less expensive and we can get it out distributed to our, our citizens, especially in rural areas or in areas that might be more developing. So that's a way you can think through in a long-term view. Short-term view, it's say, ah, well, look at that. It's, it had a big drop. We're seeing some, some indicators there. If we go back to our nine day, you know, we can, or, or let's say a five day, let's go five day. Um, you can see, oh, we're definitely below, right? So we've crossed the line, we should be selling. So you can look at it different ways, but a long view person might look at this and say, okay, this is an opportunity to buy in here. Let's look at um, and try some other things. We're gonna, we're gonna put some other things around here too. Uh, let's look at Pfizer here, all right? So I happen to know that Pfizer is PFE, otherwise you could just type it in. We'll go to Pfizer. Uh, it kept our five day moving average. So you can see that, uh, you know, Pfizer has been kind of, you know, bouncing around here and you can see they had some early good stuff from the trials and things. They, and this is back when they got it released. So you had this real big being first in the market. They had a big run up here. Uh, and you can see their five day moving average line here. And it kind of runs along with it, but we're definitely in a downtrend here, right? You can certainly see that in long term wise, we're, we're definitely in a downtrend. If we look at this peak, and we go down here, I mean, we, if we ignore that little outlier, you can see we're definitely in a downtrend and we would want it to cross above that. It's not too far from it, but it, we, we would definitely want it to do that for example. Um, but let's say we're looking more of a short-term trade on this. Let's say, okay, are we, are we still in a downtrend? How is that looking? Well, okay, same deal. We could go up here and we could see that we've got multiple touches here on our downtrend. Uh, one, two touch, this is, these are close. You know, volume staying pretty steady. Uh, it looks like it's crossing above the moving average line. These are down days, but at some point during the day, they're crossing above. So I might monitor this, this stock a little bit to see, 
okay, do I wait for it to cross above that moving average? What if I change that moving average from five, which is a pretty tight one? Let's go to um, 10. Let's say that's a 10-day 10, 10 moving average, just simple moving average. You can see how things change. Our trend lines are gonna stay the same, but now you can see we've changed a little bit as far as um, you know, along, those, along how the line looks. But let's say we also wanted to look at something like uh, relative strength index, for example, is always a good one. And we're looking to see, is this oversold? Is, you know, maybe this has gotten really sold down and maybe it's oversold. So let's take a look at that as far as something, another indicator. So we could type in RSI and, and find relative strength index. And as you call from the lessons on relative strength index, you want to buy if it's crossing below the 30% line. All right, so here's 30%. And you want to sell if it's above 70% in a typical buy and sell situation. So you can see it's definitely not near the 70%. In fact, it's below the 50%, you know, if we're looking at this line here, approximately. It's definitely below that. It's not reached 30%, but it doesn't have to be perfect. But we could say, okay, well, this is still low. This is like a 37. So we might be watching for a buying opportunity here. So uh, also, what do we see here? An earnings announcement is coming up the next day. So you might say, okay, what I think I might trade on this, uh, and you can see right now we've got a very narrow trading range. This is the current day here. See how that almost looks, is it like a doji? A very, very low trading range here uh, and pretty low. So everybody's kind of waiting for that earnings announcement. So we could, oh, recommendation here might be, let's see what happens in the earnings announcement unless we feel we're real, pretty good on it. And then if, we, if that earnings announcement comes up good and it crosses over our moving average line, and if our, our RSI is gonna look good anyways, but across the moving average line, then we might put a buy in here with a nice stop too. Especially if it breaks through this downward trend line. If it goes through both, if it goes through a moving average and the trend line, downward trend line here, you know, those could be uh, good good situations for Pfizer. Let's look at, uh, so we would might be hold hold off on that. Again, traders look at things different ways, right? You might, so another trader would look at this completely different and that's fine, or use different different measures. To keep it consistent, let's leave our same measures on there. So we've got our um, our moving average at a 10-day moving average. You can see the current day, we're getting you know a little less volume, but a little bit more wide, or definitely a wider range. You can see Moderna has had this really nice kind of trend up here. Look at that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There was like seven out of eight days in a row just in here where it closed upwards. And then we even had closes here. So they've been on a nice little run here have a little outlier here, not a full gap up, but it had a certainly a nice peak in the range and um, and then came down and then we had a closing day as it might be, we might look at this and say, maybe this is a start of some profit uh, taking, right? So they had a nice run up, they had a big you know rise up here the day before. Uh, the seller said, no, that's getting too high. Let's bring this down. In fact, let's go, we opened the day here, but we're gonna close the day here. That's why it's a red candle, right? That's where it's opening and closing, open close on that red candle. So they closed here, and then the uh, open and close is right around the same part, and now it's, it's still trading in the day, but it's you know trading in this broader range here. So right now, you know, you can see uh, as far as where that is. And we're definitely above our moving average uh, in our, but look at our RSI, see how it's different than Pfizer? So this might be showing more of an oversold, or excuse me, overbought condition. So because, why? Because we had this big run up here. So if I was looking at this just on these indicators, and I'm not looking, you can look at other indicators too, but let's say you were trading and your primary indicator was um, a moving average line. Let's say it's a 10 day moving average, simple moving average. And then you were confirming that with your RSI to see from a, if that's a good you know, position to buy if it's approaching near the 30%. So we'd look at this and say, okay, right here, uh, or actually right here, all the way back here, we crossed above the moving average line. Our RSI was down way, you know, looking back here around 46, so it was kind of middle of the road, it wasn't 30, but we did cross above that, and we stayed above a little bit, and then we had a nice run up here, and you can see the RSI followed with that. But right now, if we're looking at it from a buy standpoint, you know, we would say, okay, this is above the moving average line, that's good. Um, we've already crossed it a well back before, we've had a nice trend up, that's good too. But right now, maybe we're getting ready to start a trend down, because this might be overbought according to our RSI. So that's another way you can think of it. Now we don't have a trend yet because we just don't have enough, enough touches, right? We could say, oh, okay, well, let's say, look at this, Steve, we got a downtrend here. If we had, if you're closing on, if we're looking at days here, you know, if this closed again, you know, touching this line or below this line, and you started seeing more of that, 
then we might be definitely in a downtrend. But right now, I don't think there's enough information to tell us that we're in a downtrend. Uh, also, we're not seeing spikes in volume. All I would say from this is right now, if I was trading this and I was looking to buy it, I might be cautious uh, because of this RSI. That would be the thing to say and be watching for this downtrend in terms of that, if this starts to form or develop. So there you have it with some vaccine stocks. And so you can kind of look at them and say, oh, okay, you know, this is different ways you could trade on these different, different vaccine stocks. Uh, in fact, let's bring up Giants and Johnson while we're talking here. And you can say whether I'm doing a short-term trade or a long-term trade. You see, well, now that we have the RSI up here, we can see here's, here's Johnson Johnson, middle of the road on the RSI. So here you, you can see you've got now maybe using those same things together. In fact, if we were trading, let's say maybe this is our best trade opportunity, bad news that came down, close to the moving average line, if we trade on that, on that indicator, maybe we're gonna wait for it to go above that moving average line, that would be the rule around that for the crossover. And we're middle of the road as far as um, the RSI, but we're not at all this peaky stuff, but it would be better if this was down a little bit further here, especially if it's crossing below 30 is what would be more ideal. All right, so there you have it. Uh, again, long-term versus short-term and how you can kind of look at competitors in this lesson.